grace, mercy, and peace be with you this morning. I'm Betsy Sweetenberg, the pastor here, and I speak on behalf of everyone leading worship this morning when I say that we are so glad you've joined us. Before I give you background on this morning's worship service, I want to lift up a couple of things happening in our life together. First, this Wednesday will be our last worship under the stars of the year. You can register for that on our website. If you register for that service on our website, you'll also see that you can reserve a sacred moment of prayer and meditation in the sanctuary if you want to come enjoy this beautifully decorated space on a Wednesday night. Finally, you'll also see that registration is available for our four outdoor worship services on Christmas Eve. We hope that you will join us in the final weeks of preparation for Christmas. This morning, our worship service is a traditional service of lessons and carols. And I want to express my immense gratitude to our music director, Brian Page, for making this happen. It's a feat to do this kind of service when you can have the entire choir together. So you can imagine the logistics involved in putting this together under today's circumstances. I also want to thank Julia Boudreau, our accompanist, and all of the choir members participating. We are so grateful for the gifts you will share with us this morning. Lessons and carols have a rich history. The Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols was first celebrated at King's College in Cambridge on Christmas Eve of 1918. It was an adaptation of a similar service that had been written for the cathedral at Truro in 1880. The Lessons and Carol service was planned by Eric Milner White, who at the age of 34 had just been appointed Dean of Kings after experience as an army chaplain, which convinced him that the Church of England needed more imaginative worship. Developing this service was his response to that, and almost immediately, other churches adapted the service for their own use. A wider frame began to grow when the service was first broadcast in 1928, and with the exception of the year 1930, it has been broadcast annually, even during the Second World War when the ancient glass, and also all the heat, had been removed from the chapel and the name of King's College could not be broadcast for security reasons. In these and other ways, the service has become public property of sorts. From time to time, the college receives copies of services held, for example, in the West Indies or the Far East, showing how widely the tradition has spread. Wherever the service is heard and however the service is adapted, whether the music is provided by a choir or a congregation or soloists, the pattern and strength of the service, as Dean Milner White pointed out at its very first service, that the power of this service is derived from the lessons and not from the music. The main theme of the lessons is the development of the loving purposes of God, seen through the windows and words of the Bible. Local interests appear, as they do here, in the bidding prayer, and personal circumstances give poignance to different parts of the service. Our service today puts us in the company of faithful generations before us and joins us with a community of Christians across the world who also use this wonderful order of worship to prepare for the Christ child. And so as we wake, work our way through these beautiful words of scripture, which are only highlighted by the music that echoes the promises proclaimed, I invite you to center yourself in the loving purposes of God. What lessons speak to you right now? What promise did you need to be reminded of today? Ponder those questions as we worship God together. I dream of dance parties in the kitchen 
I dream of laughter that is contagious. I dream of birthday candles and another beautiful year. I dream of family game nights and dinner parties with friends. I dream of homemade costumes and homemade family recipes. I dream of pillow forts, fireflies, and front porch swings. I dream of every little thing that brings joy, and I know that it comes from God. So today we light the candle of joy as a reminder that God's dream for this world involves the end of wars. God's yes. dreams for this world involves a joy that overflows and is contagious. So may this fire burn bright, and as it does, may we sing, may we dance, may we laugh, and may we hold on to the people we love. May we sow joy in a hurting world, and may it be an act of holy resistance. Amen. Amen. Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild, Jesus Christ, her little child. He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. And his shelter was a stable, and his cradle was a stone. With the poor and meek and lowly, lived on earth our Savior. Psalm 8, a Psalm of David. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you're mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas, and it ends as it begins, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Here ends the reading.
A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike you on your head, and you will strike his heel. Here ends the reading. Our readings are taken from Isaiah 7, 14 and Isaiah 11, 1 through 9. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and she shall name him Emmanuel. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears may hear. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. 
This here ends the reading. From the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 48. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. 
For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Here ends the reading. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Here ends the reading. Thank you. 
A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared in the, with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Here ends the reading. reading from Luke, the second chapter, verses 17 through 20. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Here ends the reading. The holly and the ivy, when they are both full grown, of all the trees that are in the wood, the holly bears the crown. Oh, the rising of the sun and the running of the deer, the playing of the merry heart, sweet singing. white 
Santa's lily fall, and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ to be our sweet Savior. Oh, the rising of the Reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called to the wise men and learned from them exa the exact time where the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Here ends the reading.
A reading from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends the reading. The traditional lessons and carol service includes a bidding prayer. So our prayer today will be a bidding prayer. And as you hear me say the words, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond with hear our prayer. Let us pray together. In this season, when we prepare for the birth of a vulnerable child, we pray for vulnerable children everywhere. We pray for home for them, home where there is food enough and shelter enough, home where there is warmth enough and affection enough, home where they can learn the ways of love. We pray for all those who cannot find such a home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season, when we celebrate the birth of the one called Prince of Peace, we pray for a world of wars and rumors of wars, of violence and unrest. We pray for all those who stand in harm's way in service to those they love. We pray for the breaking of our addiction to violence, that there may be peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season, when we celebrate Mary and Joseph welcoming their child into the world, creating a family like all families, we pray for families divided by bitterness or tragedy, distance or indifference. We pray for those who yearn to belong but feel alienated and alone. May friendship and companionship ease their pain May love find them and follow them all their days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season, when we celebrate the birth of the one who grows and suffers and dies, we pray for those who are suffering, those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, those living in the shadow of death. May they know the comfort and peace of your abiding presence and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in this season, when we celebrate the light shining in the darkness, we pray for the kindling of hope in our hearts. May we be the answer to all of these prayers. May we be instruments of peace and beauty and love and justice. May we defy the shadows with our compassion and our joy. And may the world be changed in us and through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the dawn come, may the shadows flee, and may joy be born in us anew. We pray this in all things, in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I 
sought both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me, and he showed me the way. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and Go out into God's world with peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you this day and always, always. Amen. Amen.